new this morning. 18 of the 19 U.S. embassies and consulates closed recently across the Middle East are expected to reopen tomorrow. But due to continuing concerns about potential terrorist attacks, the State Department says our embassy in Yemen, as well as the consulate in Lahore, Pakistan, will remain closed, at least for now. The president addressed the issue during his news conference at the White House Friday. For al-Qaeda is on its heels, has been decimated, but what I also said was that al-Qaeda and other extremists have metastasized into regional groups that can pose significant dangers. Joining me now, counterterrorism expert David Gartenstein Ross, who is also with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. David, with a welcome to you. Okay, the president breaks it down clearly there. There's core Al Qaeda, and then there's sort of the ancillary, the splintered off groups of Al Qaeda. Overall, does Al Qaeda still have the capacity to strike U.S. targets? The answer seems to be yes. Uh, I would challenge the president's distinction, though. Uh, you just had, and this has come out in the Wall Street Journal and other places, uh, Al Qaeda named the uh, head of the Yemeni branch, Nasr al wahishi as its general manager. What this suggests is that the conception of core al-Qaeda limited to Afghanistan and Pakistan isn't necessarily correct. If you have someone of such an important uh, mission uh, in charge of the Yemeni branch, that suggests that there is uh, some intersection between the core and the affiliates. Okay. Um, how do you interpret the 18 of 19 embassies, consulates that reopen tomorrow? Does that mean threat has passed? I think temporarily it has. Uh, You'll notice that there haven't been any arrests. Uh, we haven't apprehended uh, the suspects or the alleged team uh, that was ready to strike at an embassy somewhere in the world. That means that the threat could return at some point in time. Yemen's a dangerous neighborhood, so it's not a surprise uh, that the Yemeni embassy hasn't been opened. Uh, but I I'd suggest that, that if they're still out there, uh, one thing that means is that at some point they can reconstitute and try to uh, attack again. We probably feel that for the moment uh, the uh, immediate threat has passed. But Devine, can you get behind what it was that drew the United States to close out of an abundance of caution so many embassies at the same time. Is that normal protocol or was there something that was quite profound that they were getting? It's obviously not normal protocol. We haven't done this before. Uh, there's a report in the Daily Beast which actually sheds some light on this. It uh, describes what they call an al-Qaeda conference call, uh, which isn't exactly the right term. Uh, it was an encrypted communication that allowed multiple users to take part. Uh, but intelligence sources told the Daily Beast that there were uh, about 20 major operatives from various parts of the world. If you look at that number and compare it to the embassies we shut down, uh, it seems certain, and the Daily Beast does have some verification of this, that uh, the, the embassy closures indicate where those operatives were coming from. Essentially, they got a piece of information that made it seem uh, that there was a plot that could be in any number of places and that was in advanced stages. Whether it was or not, we'll be debating for a while. Uh, there's not enough information to really assess the administration's judgment, but that at least is the information that they based the closures upon. Oh, okay, so, but to be this intercepted conference call or some sort of encrypted information, is this something that we got access to because of the NSA telephone records? That is an excellent question. I don't think we know the answer to that. Uh, the reporting on this has been uh, somewhat all over the place because there's been um, essentially haphazard uh, ways in which sources have talked to the media. Uh, but certainly there was a courier who was intercepted. Uh, it seems to me that there were also electronic intercepts. Uh, but it's not clear which piece of information came from the courier and which piece came from the electronic intercepts. At any rate, uh, I do think some of the leaks are related to the ongoing controversy over NSA. Um, but overall, this is uh, part of a foreign spying program. It's not part of the mm -hmm. domestic program that's been so controversial. Okay, speaking of the controversy, um, the president spoke in great detail about the NSA program during that address uh, to the media on Friday, and here's part of that. No, I don't think Mr. Snowden was a patriot. Uh, as I said in my opening remarks, I called for a thorough review of our surveillance operations before Mr. Snowden made these leaks. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Would these reforms have happened without the NSA document leaks? Uh, would, would what have happened? The reforms I'm sorry. that the president's calling for. That, that's, uh, I think, an open question. Certainly, um, uh, he wouldn't be uh, trumpeting them this much. Uh, but you know, I, I, I can't really uh, read the president's soul on this one. Okay. Well, David Gartenstein Ross, we thank you for what you did read with us. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. Now to